As long as I'm president of the United States, Iran will not get a nuclear weapon. Iran will back down. It's June 2010. Deep inside a uranium enrichment facility in Iran, something impossible was happening. Centrifuges, these massive, delicate machines spinning uranium gas at supersonic speeds, were tearing themselves apart. Engineers were baffled as nearly 1,000 of these machines failed. But here's the thing. The computers that controlled these centrifuges weren't connected to the internet. They were air-gapped isolated, supposedly impossible to hack. Wow. But someone had figured out how to reach into this isolated fortress and destroy it from the inside. And what they used changed warfare forever. To understand what happened, we first need to rewind to the mid 2000s when the world was watching Iran with growing alarm. In 2002, President George W. Bush gave his famous Axis of Evil speech. Iran aggressively pursues these weapons and exports terror. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil, arming to threaten the peace of the world by seeking weapons of mass destruction. The reason? Intelligence showing that Iran was secretly building nuclear facilities. And here's where things start to escalate. Fast. In 2005, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad became Iran's president. He was a hardliner, someone who openly called for Israel to be wiped off the map. And at the same time, Iran was installing thousands of centrifuges at a secret underground facility called Natanz. The centrifuges, chained together in long cascades, spin and enrich uranium to boost the rate of refinement. Israel was terrified. Prime Minister Ariel Sharon and later Benjamin Netanyahu saw this as an existential threat. And nothing could imperil our common future more than the arming of Iran with nuclear weapons. Netanyahu had been warning about Iran's nuclear program since the 1990s, saying that Iran was just years away from a bomb. The United States imposed sanctions. This resolution advocates sanctions on the Iranian Central Bank. The UN Security Council passed resolution after resolution between 2006 and 2010, demanding that Iran stop enriching uranium. Iran refused. They said it was for peaceful energy. Nobody believed them. And behind the scenes, Israel was planning airstrikes. Let's take a minute to think about the position that the United States was in. Israel, America's closest ally in the Middle East, was saying, we're gonna bomb Iran. And if Israel bombs Iran, then Iran would retaliate. Hezbollah would launch missiles from Lebanon. The whole region could explode into war. American troops were already in Iraq and Afghanistan. The 2008 financial crisis had just hit. Declines across all of the major technology sectors. The last thing America needed was another war in the Middle East. So the Bush administration and then the Obama administration had a choice. Let Israel bomb Iran and risk a regional war or find another way to slow down Iran's nuclear program. That is where Stuxnet comes in. The third option, the invisible option, a way to sabotage Iran's centrifuges without firing a single shot, without anyone even knowing it was happening. According to a 2007 national intelligence estimate, Iran had actually halted its structured nuclear weapons program back in 2003, probably in response to the US invasion of Iraq. But they were still building the capability, still enriching uranium, still installing more centrifuges. The question wasn't if Iran could build a bomb, it was when. And that's why somewhere around 2005, 2006, the US and Israel began developing what would become the world's first digital weapon. Let's fast forward to 2010. Iran was running a massive nuclear program at a facility called Natanz. This place is basically Fort Knox buried underground, heavily guarded, and most importantly, completely disconnected from the outside world. But in early 2010, something started going wrong. Inspectors from the Atomic Energy Agency noticed something weird. Iran's centrifuges were failing at an alarming rate. The Iranians couldn't figure out why, and neither could the inspectors. Hidden in the computers was a piece of malware unlike anyone had ever seen. It was written in multiple programming languages, and it exploited not one, not two, not three, but four 
different zero day vulnerabilities. Let me just explain why that's insane. A zero day vulnerability is a vulnerability that the company that made the thing doesn't even know about. They're incredibly valuable. Some of them sell for millions of dollars on the open and black markets. To use four of them in a single attack, that had never been seen before. And this immediately told researchers, this isn't just some hacker in a basement. This was a nation state. Once inside, Stuxnet did something brilliant. It didn't go after every computer, it was hunting. It was looking for one very specific thing, Siemens Step 7 software, the program used to control the centrifuges at Natanz. And this is where it gets really sophisticated. Of the approximately 100,000 computers infected by Stuxnet worldwide, more than 60% were located in Iran. When Stuxnet found its target, it did something crazy. It took control of the centrifuges and made them spin faster, then slower, then faster. These machines normally spin at 1,000 rotations per second. Stuxnet made them spin erratically, causing catastrophic vibrations. And the genius part is, while it was destroying the centrifuges, Stuxnet was simultaneously sending fake data to the monitoring systems. So the engineers were looking at screens thinking, everything's fine, everything's normal, everything is green. So who created this thing? Well, no one has officially taken credit, but the evidence all points in one direction. According to reporting from the New York Times, The Guardian, and the BBC, Stuxnet was a joint operation between the US and Israel, codenamed Operation Olympic Games. According to sources, during a meeting at the White House Situation Room late in the Bush presidency, pieces of a destroyed test centrifuge were literally spread out on the conference table. They had tested Stuxnet on P1 centrifuges, the same model that Iran uses, and according to IEEE Spectrum, the operation destroyed approximately a thousand centrifuges at the Natanz facility. Some analysts estimated it set Iran's nuclear program back by about two years. So what are the implications of all this? Stuxnet proved something that until 2010 was theoretical. You could use code to destroy physical infrastructure. Not just steal data, not just crash computers, actually destroy machinery. 15 years later, Stuxnet's legacy is everywhere. Every major nation now has cyber warfare capabilities. How many Stuxnet level weapons are sitting dormant in critical systems today, waiting to be activated? Stuxnet changed the rules. It showed that cyber attacks aren't just about stolen credit cards or leaked emails, they can destroy. And the scary part, we're only at the beginning of understanding what that really means.